Hi, it's Dwyer from GamblersAdvisory.com. Here to talk about the on and off again, and on again and off again fight at middleweight between Kelly the Ghost Pavlik and Paul the Punisher Williams. First, before I go further, let me just point out that while both of these fighters are very highly regarded, both of these fighters not only are beatable, but both of these fighters have been beaten. We all know about Kelly Pavlik's loss to Bernard Hopkins. Let me just point out that Paul Williams actually lost to Carlos Quintana. They fought twice. The first Williams-Quintana fight should give you the blueprint on how to beat Paul Williams. It's a tough road, but it can be done. Now, that said, I actually have a clear preference in this fight. In this fight, Pavlik versus Williams, I like Paul Williams to win this fight going away. Uh, there is a huge disparity, and I believe it's a fatal disparity to Kelly Pavlik. There's a huge disparity in foot speed and movement. And I do not believe, especially after the Bernard Hopkins fight, I do not believe that Kelly Pavlik knows how to handle a fighter with Paul Williams' movement. Uh, Williams could fight the same fight that he fought and won against Antonio Margarito, and I believe he can win this fight easily. Let me just make a point, though. Um, I recommend in structuring the bet that you do do a straddle. While I do not see, even in Atlantic City, Kelly Pavlik being able to beat Williams by decision, I do believe that Kelly Pavlik has an outside shot to beat Williams by knockout. And so the bet I would recommend, if you want to straddle, to be on both sides of the aisle and to minimize your losses if the other fighter wins, the straddle I would recommend would be Kelly Pavlik by knockout, straddled against Paul Williams to simply win the fight. Williams is one of the most active punch throwers in all of boxing. He throws punches in bunches. And understand that um, when you do that, it completely discombobulates the uh, opponent who's not prepared for it. Uh, it's a formula he has used to beat skilled counterpunchers like Winky Wright. It's also a formula he has used to beat fighters who are power punchers, but who, to get in rhythm, need a slower pace like Antonio Margarito. If you look at Williams' record, you're going to find out that Williams is an elite fighter who has already beaten five different guys who have held the belt. Now here, the way I would see this fight playing out is I believe that Williams would come in. Um, Kelly Pavlik has a host of problems. Uh, he telegraphs his punches for one, doesn't bend his legs. Bernard Hopkins, after uh, their fight said that uh, Kelly Pavlik wasn't slick enough, and Pavlik, of course, uh, can be forced to throw punches across his body because his foot speed isn't up to par. So a fighter like a Bernard Hopkins was able to hide off of Pavlik's left shoulder and literally force Pavlik to come across with his right hand. By the time the punch got there, not only was Hopkins able to move out of the way, but the power of the punch was dissipated. Now, both guys fight off rhythm. When you watch their fights, you'll see that they literally are fighting in some kind of rhythmic type thing. In other words, Williams, you know, there's a certain cadence to what he does. And uh, I believe Williams comes in. He's going to overwhelm Kelly Pavlik with a lot of punches. He's going to move just like he did in the Antonio Margarito fight. And forget the nickname. Forget this Punisher nickname. I believe that's more marketing than the actual fighter 
I do not believe Paul Williams goes for the knockout. I believe Williams is going to come in and he's going to literally just try to outbox Kelly Pavlik. And I don't believe it's that hard. The problem with power punchers like Kelly Pavlik is they're really tested in a boxing match. And uh, while Kelly Pavlik was able to outbox Jermaine Taylor in the second fight, Jermaine Taylor is one of those enigmatic fighters who, um, as I watch his style, I don't see Jermaine Taylor counterpunching. I don't see Jermaine Taylor using the cues that uh, Bernard Hopkins uses in fighting a fighter. Bernard Hopkins is reactive. Jermaine Taylor is proactive. Now, I believe Paul Williams is a little bit more advanced than Jermaine Taylor, but I also believe that he can overwhelm Kelly Pavlik, uh, and I believe he'll be able to keep sufficient distance. Keep in mind, even though Williams is a little bit shorter than Pavlik, by one and a half inches, Williams actually has the much longer reach. I believe Williams can hide behind a jab, can literally pile up the points. Poor Kelly is going to be reduced to head hunting. If you think about Kelly Pavlik's biggest wins, right, the Edison Miranda win. Understand Miranda, of course, um, not a high punch output fighter, was right in front of Kelly Pavlik, and Kelly Pavlik was able to walk him down, catch him up on the ropes. Miranda was foolish enough to have his back touch the ropes in that fight. Um, think about the Jermaine Taylor fight. When they were in the middle of the ring, Kelly Pavlik got dropped early in that fight, got off the canvas, was badly hurt. It was only when Taylor slowed down that Kelly Pavlik was able to catch up with him. Of course, the second fight was just a boxing match. I thought the decision in that rematch was debatable. I know the late, great Vernon Forrest was um, in the building watching that fight, and he thought Jermaine Taylor won that fight. He said so in interviews. Here, I believe that Paul Williams is going to get off to the same kind of start that Jermaine Taylor did the first time Taylor fought Kelly Pavlik, only he'll be able to maintain the punch output. I do not believe Kelly Pavlik has any answers for that strategy. In fact, quite frankly, if Pavlik gets hurt, I would not be surprised if Williams were to win this fight by knockout. When Williams sits down on his punches, he can throw them with power. Be that as it may, uh, my prediction is simply that uh, Paul Williams should win this fight. I would straddle it with Kelly Pavlik by knockout if they were to fight in a phone booth. Kelly Pavlik is an excellent offensive fighter who can stop almost anyone. The problem is, of course, boxing is fought in a square ring. And a slugger with limited foot movement who can't cut off the ring against mobile fighters is going to have problems time after time any time he fights an elite fighter of Bernard Hopkins' quality or poor Williams' quality. So I'm not surprised that they had a hard time negotiating this fight. I'm not surprised that Kelly Pavlik's people uh, were insisting on a rematch clause. I'm not surprised that Kelly Pavlik had a knuckle problem and needed to postpone this fight to uh, November. I'm also not surprised that there is a chance this fight might not come off. Think about it. Uh, Pavlik's people want the fight rescheduled for the same night that Joe Goosen is supposed to be in Oakland, California to watch his other great fighter, Andre Ward, fight against Mikael Kessler. And so uh, there's a lot of politics going on. I believe the Pavlik people might understand that this is a very tough fight. Keep in mind, this is not the first high-profile fight that the Pavlik people have uh, tried to reschedule and then possibly canceled. Pavlik was supposed to fight Sergio Mora earlier. Uh, keep in mind, in that fight, he was supposed to be a 7-1 to one favorite. I told uh, viewers here on YouTube that I thought Mora had a chance to not only cover, but to win that fight. And then, of course, that fight ultimately got canceled. I don't know who's advising Kelly Pavlik. He certainly should never have fought Bernard Hopkins. I believe he shouldn't fight Paul Williams. He might get undressed in this one. I like Williams to win. I would straddle it with Pavlik by knockout. Let us know your thoughts 
visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Good luck.